This is kind of an interesting setup. Well, I think it's interesting, but I'm weird and find this kind of thing interesting, so bear with me. There's not much to measure from to make sure that these parts are correctly aligned to each other and to the main tube before I weld it. So I've had to think about this a little bit. And what I've done is I've taken the two main lugs and I've taken the pins out of the excavator and I've put them in place and that makes sure that the, all the bores are concentric and this will go together. And then these pins are pretty wore out so there's some there's quite a bit of slob. So I took a spreader clamp and I pressed them apart so that should square everything up and bias all of the clearance in these four holes to the same sides. And then I measured the width of the dipper and of the linkage on the excavator and I added about a millimeter to that and cut two wooden spacer blocks and clamped the lugs to them. And they're nice and parallel on the ends and accurate and square. So that should hold these lugs just good to one another. So these should uh, pin off to the excavator without any issues if they're held in this orientation when I weld. Then take this assembly, which is all clamped to itself in a single piece, and align it to this. There are six degrees of freedom in space to control. X, Y, and Z, and A, B, and C. X, Y, and Z being translations, um, and A, B, and C being rotations about each of those axes. So if we call X the length of the tube, Y horizontal and normal to X, and Z vertical, these slots, which I laid out carefully relative to the ends of the tubes, control the X location. The Y location is controlled by the corner of the lug here, me just measured to the surface of the tube, just with a tape measure. It doesn't need to be especially accurate, but that controls Y. And Z is controlled by the, the depth that these slots were cut, which was referenced to the tangent point on the tube. That's all pretty straightforward. The rotations are trickier because there's nothing flat to measure angles to. Um, so A, which is rotation about X, is completely irrelevant because this tube is round and there are no other features on it yet. This can be anywhere and everything I add from this point forward will be related in A back to these lugs, so I don't have to worry about it now. B is rotation about Y, so that's this way. Uh, and I did that with just a bubble level. I put a, a wedge on this side of this tube because my table isn't perfect and leveled the tube and then check level on the, um, the pin here. And I could have shimmed where they seated here. Actually, I did a good enough job cutting these slots. I didn't need to. It is, it is, these are parallel without me needing to shim anything. So it just worked out, but I could have made an adjustment there if I wanted to. And then C is rotation about the vertical axis, which I just set with a carpenter's square. It's a little tricky since everything is round, but I think the best angle is to come in underneath here and sight down the inside of the lug plate. And that is perpendicular. So this is ready. These three parts are aligned to one another the way that I want them. And so it's time to start welding. And there's a number of these little thought puzzles. There's because this is round, as pieces get added, I'm gonna be doing some interesting games to make sure they're all aligned the way that I want them before I make them one piece. So we'll be talking about that as it comes up. <laughs>